Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of All Consuming Podcasts. Yeah. But before we get started, Tyler keeps telling me he wants to talk about something. <laughs> okay, this sounds weird, but I just, right when we got on here, I just noticed you had a brand new haircut. Oh, is that what you wanted? You're like, I have to ask Gary about it. I just have to ask. It looks really good. And so I was just wondering, like, what do you tell your uh, your barber or wherever you go? Like, what Well, do first you... of all, I go to Sport Clips. <laughs> I don't even know if that's like a global thing or not. It's at least a chain. I mean, we have one, so it's like yeah. a chain. Yeah. You know, it's a place that plays games and usually football on or something, but I was there to watch tennis. Woo. I've actually never watched a tennis game like on TV. It's a match. Sorry. A tennis <laughs> match. There was a tennis match on for sports clips. Yeah, it's like the Australian Open or something. Okay, sure. So it's a pretty about big like deal. This 20 year old kid who's like schooling all these people and how he's like a prodigy, whatever. Someone out there is like, dude, I know that guy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I just number one back in front and then like finger length on the top. And they're like, OK, well, that's cool. I mean, I'm a little bummed right now because I also got a haircut, took my hat off and everything. And Gary dude, didn't even I haven't like, seen you in so long. Oh, I see now. With the hat. That f- OK. On the, yep. But anyways, I, I do the same. Uh, but here's the deal, dude. I usually go to a barber like I have a barber. You have a classic guy. cuts. I've got a guy. I guess they're like it's like guys. You know, it's like Mm -hmm. it could be any of them, but like it's a place and I trust them, but it's been hard to get in lately and I needed a haircut. um, And so I went to Great Clips today and I checked in on the app and whatever and got there and I walk in and on the speakers or whatever, it's pan, it's walk by Pantera. That's like playing at Great Clips. There's like little kids like getting their haircuts, uh-huh. sitting in the chairs. It's a and classic. It, <laughs> and like the people like that are cutting hair, they're not metalheads. Like if right. you were to see them, they're like you know, I'd say ladies in their forties that you know have hard hard <laughs> okay. candy in their pockets or something. You know, sure. like whatever. Um, but you want like, Werther's? <laughs> <laughs> and Pantera is like on oh, dun 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 dun. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> And uh, anyways, I sit down and like this lady is like, this is such a weird playlist that Great Clips has going for us today. And in my mind, I'm like, this is like a Great Clips thing. Like, what's no going- way. Yeah, exactly. Like somebody has to be controlling this music. Yeah. Yep. And uh, anyways, she was very flabbergasted too. And was very annoyed as she was cutting my hair. She was very annoyed that there was metal music being She's played like two step in while snipping your hair no she was mad like she was literally like visibly upset and i'm like it's, it's fine i like it she's like oh it's just not what people want when they come into the store I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. like okay and then afterwards like after that it changed right back to like pop yeah it was crazy was there some like guy sitting in the waiting area just cracking up? <laughs> He's probably like on the Bluetooth or something, just like connected to it. <laughs> yep. I don't know, but it was crazy. Oh. So I was like, I got to talk to Gary about that. It's a good story. It's a good oh, one. Okay. Well, you got any stories lately, man? It's, I feel like it's been a few weeks since we've talked. Nope. Nothing new here. You know, just uh, January's most of the way done and back in the groove of things. Kids here's in the, school and sports. And Here's the real question. February 14th. Dude, I don't know. Valentine's Day. Yeah. The devil wears Prada, fit for a king, at the knitting factory in Spokane. Will you be my Valentine, Gary, or are you going to bail? So I really, really, really want to go. Oh, And so does my wife. Uh, So we're trying to get like a sitter, someone who can just like sit in our house while our kids sleep (laughs) uh, to go. Yeah. But after I told all my friends... They're like, oh, it's on Valentine's Day. I'll see if my wife wants to go. And now all of their wives are wanting to go. And it's like, okay, if your wives go, who's going to stay at my house and watch oh. my kids? So if we can figure out a babysitter deal in that amount of time, yeah, I'm going. Well, my wife already gave me permission to go up to Spokane. So yeah, Jen says I can go without her if we can't get a sitter. And I was like, I don't know. Jen really likes the Double Wars Prada now. Their last yeah. two albums are like, she listens to them a lot. Um, and even Fit for a King. She can tell when they're on the radio or on my on the radio or, on the speakers at great clips on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I hook up to when we go to Walmart, you know, we start we start blasting fit for a king. I think it's going to be a sweet show, but um, I don't know. I just haven't been to a show in a while with you. So I was hoping that we could like, I don't know, go to dinner, do Ooh. the lady, the tramp spaghetti thing, <laughs> go catch a show together, maybe some dessert afterwards. Dude, that taco place. Yeah, dude, we can get tacos before. 
Anyway. Oh, sorry. This, we're here, it's we're a here great for idea. A reason. I know a lot of people are coming up to Spokane for that too. So yeah, we're, we're actually not here just to talk about ourselves. We're here for what? a different reason, aren't we? Oh, are we recording? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So today we're going to talk about a new band mm. with a new EP that was on my top five for yeah. our album of the year episode that dropped last time, last episode. I don't know, last month. Yep. Um, the band is Immortal Construct. They're based out of California, and they're super, super good. So and we're awesome. super excited to talk about them today. Um, I, my my only complaint is that this thing is like <laughs> less than fifteen minutes long. Yeah, so I love it. I think we're gonna fly through this one. But uh, hey, did you look at their merch store? No, not at all. Okay, so they have some shirts, you know, the kinds we like with the small logo on the front, kind of yeah. thing. Okay. Um, but they got hoochie shorts. What are hoochie shorts? I don't know what hoochie shorts are. They're like short shorts that me- they're meant to show off men's thighs. Like John Stockton basketball shorts? Yeah, yeah probably shorter, but... <laughs> Dude, they go down to 2X small. Okay, I'm going to Google hoochie shorts right now, and if okay. something bad pops up, we're fighting right now. Whoops, well, I just searched so- hoochie. <laughs> Hoochie shorts. So there's a guy at Furnace Fest who wears hoochie shorts oh, all the gotcha. time. And he's always shirtless and he's like this muscly short dude. Right. Yeah, They're like dude. workout shorts, but like they show off the thigh a lot. It's like it's like a trend. Dude. Okay. I and would never. This is not the what I would wear. Interesting. But, yeah, it's a thing. I mean, I'll try it. See Here's if your wife will like them. <laughs> she might. We'll see. That's cool. I No, dude. So they got some other good merch stuff there or what? Yeah. Yeah, they got beanies and whatnot. I just, I don't remember why I looked it up, but uh, yeah, I saw the hoochie shorts and I was like, dude, if anyone's looking for hoochie shorts, that's the way to go. That's where it's at. No, I, I really have been not surprised, but like I really encouraged to find Immortal Construct because like, I feel like we haven't been getting a ton of this type of super spirit filled, like metalcore. The yeah. lyrics are, we're going to talk about them, are absolutely jesus centered and uh it's awesome like super cool um i i will say that uh i was the one that showed gary immortal Con- just kidding gary showed me immortal Con- <laughs> <laughs> gary Wait, showed what? me immortal construct like so i'm pretty sure when you showed me immortal construct you sent me their first single revelation and i ignored it or maybe i listened and was like that's cool but i did not like really respond you're like one song a whole band in one song. There's that's not enough songs. And then they like released their EP, and so this was like fairly recently. I mean, right before Christmas. Yeah. And I text you, and I was like, "Dude, Moral Construct rips." Yeah. No. Okay. You want the whole story? Here's the whole story. Yeah. Give us the story. Dude. So yeah, 2022 ish is when Revelation came out, I think. And yeah. I remember we put it on our playlist. Uh, mm-hmm. all, all of us on Discord were pretty stoked. But it it kind of faded away because it's like one song, one band, right? How do you keep track of that? Um, And then they released Genesis like earlier last year, and that's when they like showed up again. Yeah. Um, And I was excited for their album. I forgot about it. Mm. Uh, But when so the EP came out November 17th. So this is only like two months old, dude. Right. Which is crazy because it's like, oh, it's a 2023. It's a year old. But no, this is still a very new album. Um. No, I was wrong on our album of the year episode. I gave credit to Kingdom Core and I was corrected, actually. Oh. And I totally forgot. Uh so Heavy Metal Prophet yeah. is on Instagram and uh he's on our Discord server. He posted on there and like tagged me and said, Hey, here's that Christian Metalcore stuff you've been looking for. And I was yeah. like, I think I just I was like, okay, cool. And eventually listened to it. So anyway, when I listened to it, I sent you portrait port yeah, portrayals that song and you didn't respond or whatever oh right? okay yeah, yeah yeah then like around christmas time you're like dude have you seen a mortal construct they're like really good you should check them out <laughs> and i listened to them like crazy on our last fm on discord i'm the champ i've got the crown for now like by 30 plus place that only means i have to listen to the ep like six times to catch up with you okay and here's the deal i know that you kind of don't like that it's 15 minutes you put on genesis and it ends at revelation in 15 minutes that's a great like workout set you know what i'm saying 
Like that's where you go into the gym and you're like, boom, okay, EP's over, sweet. Now I'm switching to biceps, boom, EP's over. Now I'm going to, you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's just perfect. It's exactly yeah, what, it's sure great. Did. And I told you this too before, like give me the shortest song possible. The shortest, heaviest, most brutal song and I'll listen to it a hundred times. Yep. So Genesis like is great. It's I think it might be one minute. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So instead of beating around the bush, how about we actually just talk about this? EP. Let's do it. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Got your happy price, price line. Um, so this is the Truly Truly EP. Yeah. And we're going to talk about the first song. Here we go. First song is called Genesis. Ashes to ashes, it just to dust. Satan, you will be crushed. Arr. So I was kind of expecting like the typical build guitar, whatever intro, but like with Genesis, it starts and it just starts right away. Drums and then an absolute straight up call out. I, <laughs> I, I <laughs> when it, when that it just starts and it ashes to ashes, Satan or dust to dust, Satan, you will be crushed. Uh, oh my gosh. Brutal. Um, it reminds me sort of, I hate I hate doing this. I'm going to do this the whole episode. It kind of reminds me of like four today. What is the doing this? The, the, what I hate it reminds comparing you of? bands. I oh, hate comparing yeah. okay. bands to other bands and saying they sound like this. They sound like yeah, that. Yeah. As a musician, I hate that. I like to think I'm <laughs> original. Cause I do think like, obviously it's awesome, but like I get those vibes of like hell fear me, you know, like just devastator. Like we're calling out like lyrically that feeling. Um, and it's just awesome. This is this is a perfect song. Yeah, I love this song. It is my least favorite on the album. <laughs> I think I said that during our episode, but what? My, it's one minute long, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, all right. So you know what it actually reminds me of? So you say for today, but I, not that sonically it doesn't remind me of this. But Wage War on their album Blueprints, they have a yeah. song called Hollow that's exactly the same thing a minute and eight seconds you know where it just kind of like builds and has a breakdown in the middle and it just i think this is a great like intro uh yeah it's an appetizer this is what this album is going to sound like yeah true you know but i love this i do love it like you got arfs you got hoos you got <laughs> is that an arf after after satan you will be crushed is that an arf yeah dude they, they arf a lot in here and dude. they who a lot and they and I think there's like a disc scratch. Wicker, wicker, wicker. Hmm. It might be like sliding on the strings a whole bunch, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. But yeah, I mean, they just, they like sneak in a lot of, a lot of fun things like that. Oh, vocally, it's awesome. It's so cool. Uh, I, yeah, it's a minute and it's short, but like, it's just that keeps that fast pace the whole way through. And it's the same thing. Like you, we talk about ARF. It's like counting worms by knock loose in a sense. It's like super short, but iconic because it's like super heavy you know and like i I love those types of songs yeah it's fun like it's fun and vocally they do so much fun stuff like the highs the lows yeah. like i feel like they had a blast doing this because yeah. i have a blast listening to it i do like and i do this throughout their um cleans i guess are more like talking parts you know yeah, like the shout singing 
I'm no, I'm talking about like when he says like truly, truly, I tell you, oh, or yeah, yeah. whatever like that, you know. Um, and they do that a little bit. They're kind of creative. It's yeah. not really singing, you know. Yeah, you'd expect some singing choruses in here, but we don't get it. It's more yeah. don't do it, Tyler. Like August Burns Red. How dare you? I was thinking like as I lay dying. As I lay dying had that like always those highs. Oh no, I mean early before their bassist who sings joined well in shadows are security yeah. the darkest nights but before that you're saying yeah well anyway anyways i like the sweeping guitar parts and i couldn't understand the lyrics uh when i was listening to it so i had to look them up but i love the lyrics for that part oh, like dude. when they're when he's doing that and he says this is not the truth to me because of how i was raised like yeah. i love that line right a lot of people think christianity is a you know, it's like a heritage. It's a tradition. Oh, my family. Oh, yeah, we're Christians. Mm-hmm. Not like it. It's not a personal thing to people. They don't understand that, right? Yeah. Um, but he says, this is truth to me because he's living, breathing, manifesting inside of me. Yeah. Like, love those lines. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm super stoked for these dudes. And I'm ready to move on to the next song. <laughs> <laughs> there, and as we move on, there's no question in our minds, this is a Christian band, right? They make it clear with their yep, lyrics yep. that this is what it's about and this is what we're going to sing about this is what means a lot to me um or us and so uh really love that absolutely so let's move on to the next song which is lion of conquest You know, Tyler, this is probably my favorite song on the album. Really? That's interesting. Why? Uh, I, I just think it has everything. Like, they, they range all the stuff. Um, but I, maybe, maybe I'll give you a better answer after our discussion. But uh, I love all the different vocal stuff that they do on this. Um, I love, like, the blast beats that they kind of do at the start. Like, the song kind of starts yeah. like an impending doom thing. But by the end of it, it's like a War of Ages song or something. Um but I just love like the when those blast beats are there and he, he's singing uh, what we have made crooked he will make straight and the straight is all yeah. high scream and he says what we have broken he will fix break down you know I just love it. it's great it's fun that's really interesting because I was going to say it starts and it kind of has like a death core feel at the beginning mm-hmm. um, maybe with blood comes cleansing depending doom for sure right and by the end is it war of ages it's like that happy guitar picking with screams that you can understand yeah that kind of chorus in the middle that, that kind of I, chorus yeah it's they don't it's, it's, they don't exactly have a chorus but no you know what it reminds me of yeah and i don't know if i'm offending people here but <laughs> as they lay dying from an ocean between us the song forsaken they do that like positive they like the same thing right like the background of this chorus thing is like this super positive vibe musically yeah. and with like happy lyric like rejoicing lyrics absolutely um and, and it's like this like ambient you know hammering is that the right word ambient hammering on the guitar oh yeah like hammer-ons and pull-offs yeah. and stuff yeah 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 that's just yeah but that's what it reminds me of i don't i don't know like that era there's a ton of bands from that time that that did that kind of stuff right you know? No, it, I love it, that it's, it's just, great. and it's like, you know, a 20 second, 30 second snippet. Like, I feel like this song, if you take any random 20 seconds or 30 seconds, it's going to be like, oh, that sounds like this. You can do the next one. Oh, that sounds like this. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. 
But, you know, to younger people who haven't been listening to metalcore and stuff for 30 years like us. Okay, yeah. we're, not, we're not that old. But, <laughs> you know, like this is sure. this is refreshing. It is. And we say it like as it reminds us of these things as in like super positive because we love those things. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like that's why we're saying it. And I get those and I love it and it makes me want to listen more and more and more. I love – I love so many pieces of this song. Um, my favorite part is the screaming of this is how we worship. Mm-hmm. And then there's some sort of like, oh, afterwards, just like brutal. Love it. And I think we said this the song before, like all their little vocal things. I'm pretty sure we might get to it. There's a pick it up in this EP. Yep. Dude. I'm, yeah, uh, that, they had an EO on this song, you yeah, know, yeah, like they got go. everything. <laughs> so you should good. track that stuff, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so good, man. And I, I do think I like the lows and I think like it's a pretty good range. The highs are good too. Like they're really good. Yeah. The highs almost remind me of, uh, they have that album convictions that we loved. Oh but- yeah. Um, <laughs> starts with Crimson Armada. Yeah, the Crimson Armada. Yeah. Just like that, you know, higher pit. Like, it like it hurts my throat just, like, <laughs> imagining me doing that. Yeah. Yeah, no, but he's no, super I, talented. I love the music, and it's just a ton of fun. Um, And the lyrics are just so great. Uh, I like... So, Lion of Conquest, and I'm assuming I'm correct here, is, like, Believers. Yeah. And this song is, like, a, you know, like a... I don't know, get you pumped, remind you of what, why we're here and to hold fast and to yes. you know, keep going on. Uh, so during that really positive part that we liked, uh, the cor- like the chorus, quote unquote, there's a thing where he says, by the word of the Holy Spirit, come and abide in me. Mm. This world is not everlasting. So let's make this wor- time worth living. Love it. And it's just, it's super positive and it's like encouraging, you know? Yeah, it is. And it's it's another one where it's like, man, these lyrics are exactly what we crave in the music. We, you know, we love all types of music, right? Uh, we like music that's secular. We like music that's Christian, but we absolutely love the music that is like worshiping God, that is for Jesus, that is Jesus centered, because that's who we are. We love it because we're both Christians, and that's who we are. You know? Yeah. And it's cool to identify with a band and be like, man, I, I, I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, the music gets you, and then the lyrics keep you. Yes. Yeah, and I, I'm not a big fan. I, I was going to save this for another conversation maybe, but I'm not a fan of people just asking bands if they're a Christian band. I don't think yeah. you should ever ask a band that. Yeah. I think you should be able to get that information by listening to their music. You know, And the whole Christians in a band, is it a Christian band? I don't like those labels. Like, I think when we release this episode, we might use like hashtag Christian Metalcore or something, but... yeah. It's focused mostly on the genre, right? We want people to come check this out and listen to this music, not just, you know, the gatekeeping Christian metal guys. Uh, we want everyone to be able to hear this. Yeah. And I'm sure the band feels the same way, but. Right. hundred percent. That's, that's a really good point. And it doesn't matter if bands are Christians in a band or a Christian band or whatever. Like we listen to them, we love them. But like you said, when you can tell in the lyrics, when you got bands like, for today war of ages you know and you have those bands that you listen and you're like man this is like leaking out of their lyrics yep god's grace is just literally leaking out of there you see that with a uh, mortal construct too which is awesome yep. so let's move on to the next song on the ep absolute banger called portrayals How could I have wasted my heart? I looked aside and I realized I hate the man that I tried to hide the pain. 
Dude, this song has some of my like favorite musical notes. Yeah. Like there's so many good like guitar pieces and like breakdowns and grooves and they even have an arf arf. Right at the very end. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like there's just a lot of like fun metalcore stuff in it. You got that like uh what is how do how do you do that to hold on, let me listen. They have that like, you know, do 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I know exactly throughout what you're the whole saying. thing. Like I love that. Yeah. Uh, very August Burns ready to me. Very like just that technical kind of metal core, I guess, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, and they have like those like I don't know what to call them because I'm not a musician, but like those panic, you know, like oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that kind of builds suspense and you know anticipation with the song. Um, I don't know. There's just so much stuff, and there's like uh, like I really like the part. So right before like the, the it gets really fun. Uh, there's a part where he says, "So why do I find myself wrapped up in obsession with this earthly love?" Right. But during that, it's like mostly drums and the guitars are moving slow and he says you know it it builds and you think oh man here comes a breakdown but it's not yeah it's a groove very you know because he like he's like talking like shouting like why do i find myself you know building and it's like here Here it comes comes. (laughs) but it's like oh we're grooving now and then even more epic lines after that i there's a couple pieces i just love uh specifically when it comes in and the lyric that says, our vision is so far from the truth. Mm-hmm. And it's just like that China, maybe, or Crash. And it's just like, gah, 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 gah. you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, like that part, like, gets me, like, going, right? And then the part where it's like, my news is getting tighter, same mm-hmm. thing. Like, both of those things is like, just, ah, just it makes you want to get in the pit and swing. Like that's that's what it yep. makes you want to do, and this song has so many pieces that are just absolutely fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the reason I sent you the song, and I was like, Tyler, check this out, because I'm like driving my son to Awana, right? The you know kids Bible yeah. school thing at night or whatever, um, and like just jamming for my 15 minute drive there and back, and uh, which means I got to listen to the EP twice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. But uh, yeah, there's too many awesome lines too. Like, I feel like there's just some really good like snippets of their lyrics that are just like, oh man, that's great. So he says like, humanity's love will fail, but divine love will last forever. I don't worship a concept. I follow a king. By his grace alone, I know I can find perfect peace. Right? They just have these great lines and they come at such good times musically where like, it's like the start of a groove or the, you know, a breakdown. It's like bands are always looking for those like TikTok moments right 100 percent. and i feel like there's a lot in this like you could have a little tiktok moment there and there <laughs> yeah dude we could make like 10 reels with this song and each one would just be absolutely brutal yeah gotta get on it the and you know you absolutely know it's an important deal if they repeat it and so i don't worship a concept i follow a king they say it twice and you're like oh yeah and you, after yeah. they say it the first time you're like come on give me one more <laughs> And boom, they give you one more. It's like, yeah, let's go. Oh, man, it's so good. So good. Just every yeah, piece I, of the song is awesome. I love the ending. Uh, just that high like scream that they do where he says, your walls have built this fortress that is my heart. No scheme of man will ever bring me down. And they bring back that panic riff thing, you know, yeah. and end it with an arf arf. Like, uh. yeah, the song gets right over and it's just like, ah, I need I, more. I need more of that song. Which is yeah. means which means it was a great song. Yes, uh, it's my favorite song on the album. I think I said Genesis like ten minutes ago. Yeah, this is my favorite song too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's my favorite song, right? We we keep talking about how great this is. It's so awesome. It. Yeah. I don't know what songs right now that released recently this better. Well, calm down. It's been two months, Tyler. True. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm just getting all I'm getting all hyped right now, dude. Yeah, and I'm I'm not 100 percent on the on the song name to the lyrics, but I'm I think it has to do with uh, you know, there's like they talk about useless attempts are made to personify an image. Uh, it talks about idols being raised up, and I think it's about like portrayals of God are not sufficient for our mm. understanding of Him. Sure. And it kind of starts off that way, like uh, you know, what we expect to see, what we want, 
uh, versus like who he is. Right. Yeah. You know, by his grace alone, you can find perfect peace, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think it's that idea of like this, it's an inward reflection, right. Of your life. And you look at how caught up in the world you are with mm-hmm. everything, earthly love. It talks about, um, wasting his heart on something that took him farther from God. Right. That's kind of how the song starts mm-hmm. off. And it's just this idea of reflection and being like, that's not it, man. Right. There's, there's something more here and no scheme of man, nothing can ever keep us or bring us down. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Just great, great story. Great message. Yep. So with that, mm. let's move to the next song. Calloused. Thoughts of existence, this hollow crowd We can feel them growing, choking My order Harder than a gravesite Yeah, I don't show it on the outside My heart is harder than a gravesite song starts awesome i i really enjoy it says it 10 times maybe throughout the song i don't know i didn't count but my heart is harder than a gravesite but that first time like when you first hear it and it's like my heart is and that is is like held out and then all it's just hell and that brutal just like i can't do it that was the worst attempt of my life (laughs) i've got phlegm i've got i'm trying to drink tea i'm sorry it's almost like he's inhaling, but <laughs> yeah, dude, it's it's brutal. <laughs> and then harder than a gravesite hits, and it's just it's awesome, and it kind of changes the pace of the song to how it started. And it gets two stepping, dude. It, it's hardcore. It's hardcore. It's fun two step hardcore, and yeah. I love it. It's great. Or you know, tough guy metalcore. You know, the guys in the pit are all like they got their teeth sticking out. You know, their, their lower teeth? jaw. Their lower jaw. You know, they're like. Arms are dragging on the ground. What? What like shows cave- are you going to? Dude, they're like caveman dudes. You know what I- I'm talking about. Those guys are like zigzag back and forth waiting for the pit to start. Okay. And they're just like, oh, here we go. See, With I their feel windbreakers. Like the of- yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like this is the windbreaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way zipped up with their little like dad hat, <laughs> you know? And they're two-stepping, but absolutely trying to just... Dude, like, I'm at the show. Camp. I know exactly what you're they're talking about. They're wearing hoochie... Not hoochie shorts, but they're wearing shorts with a windbreak, and you're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I actually kind of like that style. Let's bring it back. Let's bring... <laughs> I need to get a windbreaker, though. Hoochie <laughs> shorts and windbreakers. <laughs> no, it, it... Okay, back to the song, though. Um, I love this style of music, and it kind of changed what they've done before, so I... I, I it's hard to say like what they are. I think I'd categorize them as metalcore, right? Yeah, I would. But yeah. there's so many different like sounds they do. It's not this. This EP is only five songs, fifteen minutes of music, whatever. Yeah. But there's so many different sounds, and it's just awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think they do some great vocal stuff on this. And as we've mentioned, like we gotta pick it up. We gotta let's go. We gotta oh, the pick it up. Yeah. Man. We gotta oh oh. We gotta ooh. We gotta bleh. See. Like when you, it's got everything. When you had that's true. The blood is great too in this one. Yeah. But when you have a pick it up, <laughs> when you when you have a pick it up and you can be on stage, like this is why I want to see this live. You say pick it up, you know what's happening right afterwards? Everyone's picking stuff up off the, the floor. The greatest circle pit ever created. Right? <laughs> that's the only way to pick something up. Right? What are what else are we gonna do? Pick it the up, gra- pick the, up the pace. The grass right? picking. Pick up the pace when I'm when I'm coaching football and I'm kids are running. Hey, pick it up. Let's go pick up the pace. He wants to see a fast circle pit, you know, and <laughs> I can just feel it and see it and like it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, yeah, I like the song. Uh, so lyrically, it's kind of it's more. Uh, it's you know, life's hard, dude. Like to use a yeah. word we haven't used in a long time. It's a lamentation, right? Okay, just because uh, we haven't used it in five days, Gary, doesn't mean so. It's been a long you time. know, they he says like you know. Th- 
to use their own lyrics, this, you know, the created people invited hell to the earth, you know, life's difficult. He talks about drowning has lots of other metaphors, but it ends with it with like a lamentation. That's like, you know, carry me away. Let me drift off to eternity. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm tired. I'm done with this. Uh, but I think it's a great, you know, lyrically there's, I don't think there's anything in here that like, I don't know, slaps Christianity in your face kind of thing. No. Um, but I feel like this, this is like a, a playlist kind of song to you know, put them on a playlist with a bunch of other hardcore, metalcore kind of stuff yeah. just to get people a feeler out there. Uh, but yeah, this is a fun song. It hits all the things I like. Uh, did you notice that like kind of towards the end, there's that line that says, trust me, it's hell and screaming really high and like, yeah. welcome to the, and it cuts to the left and he says, cruel world. And then on the world that's in the right ear. So it's like a yeah, yeah. left, right. Anyway, does it ring a bell? Fun song, dude. Yeah, I, I do like how, he talks about his heart being harder than a gravesite. And he says that I don't show it on the outside. Right. Like, and I think, I, you know, you can relate to that where there's just days where it's like, you got to put on the face and just go deal with it. You're, you're going, how, when somebody asks you how your day was or how, how's it going, you're not mm-hmm. going to say how it's really going. You're just going to be like, it's good. You know, good. And then you, you go home and you're like, Whew that was brutal, you know, or whatever is going on in your life. So yeah, I really, really think that's, that's true. And part of maybe being a Christian is you see this world and it's tough, dude. And it's not supposed to be like that. And it's extremely tiresome and aggravating and exhausting just to see the fall of humanity every single day in every walk of our life. And we're still supposed to put on this, this, not it's not necessarily fake, but to put on this like face of like, hey, you know, how's it going? Where you know, mm-hmm. try to be that loving neighbor, and it's tough. Yeah, I wonder what he means by like, you know, to be hard hearted, right? Like to yeah. show like you don't have affection. That's kind of like the yeah. you know the point of it. But are grave sites typically hard hearted? Like inside, they want to cry and be sad at a funeral kind of thing. But it's like, no, we have to be hard hearted. Don't like keep it together, you guys. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like there's a question I want to ask him. Yeah, it's definitely a fun song, but also like lyrically, like gets to the point of this earth is not what it's supposed yeah. to be. Like, like there's, there's kind there's of definitely like this, frustration in there. You yeah, know? it's kind of like yeah. the previous song too. Uh, Portrayals is fairly similar. Um, so love it. It's awesome. So with that, should we move on to the next one? The last song, Revelation. So I like the song that it's like a, so this is like an older song, right? It's technically been out for like a year plus, Yeah. but uh, I don't know. It's super fun. Uh, it kind of reminds me, it feels like this is more a more mellow song than the other four. Like it's kind of more organized and like, I don't know, they kind of have like slower parts to it, but I like the lyrics and the imagery and the pacing that they do, right? So like the song is like a call out. The first bit is a call out to the devil for what he did in Eden, mm, yeah. right? Like he says, like you know, you're, you're you breathe out lies as you end their lives, right? Because he's gonna because of him, a curse is on humanity, and now we that we yeah. experience death, right? Um, amongst other, all the other curses that we got, um, and then it moves on to like Revelation, I'll say, where it's like this description of the serpent and what. God is going to do to him. It's not pretty. <laughs> he wrecks him. It's not uh, pretty. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's pretty crazy. You know, it tears you limb from limb, rips out your entrails. You know, when he falls to the floor, the drop is cushioned by his bodily wastes. 
Yeah. Right. Kind of a dark picture, but what's cool is there's a line that says, uh, the bottom of my foot distilled in his eyes, which is like a reference to Genesis. Right. You know, the he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel, which is the, you know, basically he's going to get curb stomped. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting way to put it, but, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I, I feel like lyrically this one's a bit more... See, I've heard people say they're a deathcore band, and I'm like, no. But I, I can see if you focus on this song. This song, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perhaps. There's a lot of deathcore elements to this song for sure. I, I think I would categorize it as probably the most deathcore on the album or EP. Yeah, and it might be some of the vocals that they do too on it. It's a lot more higher end screaming, you know, and they got that like August Burns Red. I think the picture of, of Revelation of everything evil being defeated uh is a great end to the ep right and they obviously did it on purpose to go genesis and revelation what right like you got beginning and you got end and uh, just missing every, all the other books in between. all of That's- the pain in between you know um but it's a great ending to the ep it's an awesome song i i love the little how do you say it like the guitar parts where it's like you know, like the the individual yeah, like, notes along with this. Very, it's kind of a deathcore thing, you know. I guess but. is it? It kind of reminds me of like constellations. Oh, interesting! August Burns Red. Yeah. I feel like we keep referencing the same bands. So you guys can Why, tell what some of what our favorite are we bands doing? are. <laughs> yeah, we just keep referencing our favorite bands. Which, like, and I know we said this. I said this. Don't want it to come off like, oh, they just sound like other bands. No, they have like all these elements of bands and genres that we love and that's why we've been so drawn to this band this ep is full of so many amazing and different sounds Mm -hmm. that we can talk about all these bands that we love and be like dude they have sounds kind of like it yeah and you know it's not like i mean i there's validity both ways but it's not like okay this this band has five songs for us to listen to yeah august burns red has a hundred (laughs) plus (laughs) <laughs> and we've listened to all of them yeah. many times. Yeah. Right. And so when we listen to these five songs, we don't have this massive discography to like sure. find all the nuances and find like what they exactly sound like. Right. So instead, what we what we do is we just think of things that it reminds us of and plugs them. I don't know why we're defending ourselves. We can say what we want. We, this is our podcast. But I would love for these guys to drop more music. I would love to th- for them to like you know make some serious headway in you know christian metal scene or even just in the metal scene so i did listen to their interview on like i think the vocalist was on blue fire horizon uh yeah blue fire network or something yeah um and he said like their goal as a band is to get on face down like that's just like what they would love to do we got to make it happen and I know, like, how they're they for sure would be awesome on FaceTime. That's like their goal as a band is to get on FaceTime. And so it'd be super cool if that could happen. Yeah. So, Gary, we actually have a pretty awesome treat for our listeners. We were able to interview Immortal Construct to be on this episode. Yeah, we sat down with Jordan. We're super grateful to have him on our show. Yeah. Uh, he's an awesome guy, and we related with him a lot. Like, same, similar music backgrounds and growing up and stuff. So. He's a great guy. So here is our interview with Jordan, the vocalist of Immortal Construct. I'm Jordan Hatch. I am the vocalist for Immortal Construct. How many guys do you have in your band? Four. Um, Started out with just two. It was kind of a passion project between me and my buddy. We used to be in a Christian band called As He Wept way back from like 2007 to 2011. And this is actually where this EP came from, from Immortal Construct. But actually, I think I know as he wept. You guys are both Californians, correct? West Coast. No, No, we're Washingtonians. We're up north. Washington. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. West Coast is the best coast. West Coast, best (laughs) coast. I'll have to agree with you there. (laughs) Dude, yeah, we were so stoked. Like, So Gary sent me um, Revelation. When it mm-hmm. came out, when you guys dropped it, the Long single time. version, yeah, the single like way version. back, yeah, yeah, way back, mm-hmm. I believe. And I, I do this terrible thing of just like ignoring him. So I didn't, you know, <laughs> it's worse. You don't just ignore me. You like thumbs up it. 
you like react and go okay or yeah, something yeah. and it's like oh, tyler's gonna listen to that and he's gonna love it yeah and then he sent me portrayals right mm-hmm. sent me that and i thumbs up it again but then like two weeks later when you drop the whole ep or whenever it was drop the whole ep i listened to it and i sent back to gary's like dude the moral construct is like so sick he's like dude i've been telling you that for a year now So that's kind of like where we're at. But man, we have not stopped listening to this EP since you guys dropped it. It's been so awesome. That's so great to hear. I'm really glad that it's being received well and that I hope it's, you know, encouraging the saints and building up, you know, just, I don't know, reviving this Christian uh, metal scene. I want to see more and more bands. I want to see better quality music getting put out there and, I'm just glad to be involved in it. So we went through all your uh, all the songs in the EP, and we kept kept catching ourselves saying like, "Oh man, that reminds me of Four Today," or "Man, oh that reminds me of that reminds me of," and like like not in like any negative way, like super mm-hmm. positive about all that awesome, you know, 2010s. Like that era was just mm-hmm. unreal with Christian metalcore, and so mm-hmm. it's cool, it's refreshing, definitely a breath of fresh air for us to, mm-hmm. to hear it. Yeah, it's it's funny you guys say that because like literally four out of the five songs were written back then. We just really, re- yeah, like there's videos online in my old band of us playing like portrayals, like way back. But we never, like we were all 17, 18, 19, had like minimum wage jobs. We couldn't afford to like record good stuff. So it just kind of died off. Like we had an EP that we put out back then, but it it wasn't any of this stuff that you guys are hearing for immortal construct. So this is a revival. It started as a passion project of just to get what we made back then recorded and put out. And then over time, as we learned how to record music and just kind of figured things out, we're like, no, let's make it better. Let's update it. Let's like, you Mm -hmm. know, make things modern. Let's throw new twists on something that could be better than what it was back then. And it just, kept snowballing into what it's become now and now we're a full band and really want to keep putting out music that's awesome yeah that's so cool so before we move on more to the ep what got you into heavy music like what made you go oh, i want to be in a christian metal band and make music yeah. like this um so obviously you guys know for today oh yeah <laughs> um one of my good childhood friends is now the brother-in-law of one of the guitars that was in for today so ryan or the other guitarist uh so ryan and his brother they have a sister named carly who married one of my friends devin who is in nothing left with ryan and all that now cool cool so devin his his mom lives in the same court as me in california even though they're out from like the midwest like missouri area so Mm -hmm. he would come every summer and we just became friends and he introduced me to a bunch of Christian metal bands. Like you're out like riding your bikes and getting ice cream and stuff in the skateboarding. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's California. They're skateboarding, dude. Oh <laughs> yeah, dude. Right. So he like gave me a bunch of CDs. Um one was Haste the Day, Devil Wars Prada, uh, I think Destroy the Runner. Mm. Um man. There's so many different ones from back then. Uh War of Ages. Uh, oh yeah. Um, so yeah. Solid state and face down kind Ab- of stuff. Yes, all solid state face down. That's all I yeah. listen to. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's and what you're like, started. I want man. to make this music myself. Um, it started off as me being like, "Ew, they're screaming. That's icky." I like the singing stuff. <laughs> <so. laughs> yeah, when the choruses come in, they're so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I just kept listening to like Haste the Day specifically, and that's what got me into doing scream. So like. I started just learning how to do high screams because that's all they did back then. And yeah. I was like, interesting. I think I can kind of do it. And I just kept doing it. I started making vocal covers and eventually mm-hmm. found another friend who liked that type of music. We just started writing a song and then it it just builds like that. Find other members and a band eventually becomes a thing. <laughs> yeah, so was cool. it like specifically the Christian metal scene or was it just metal in general, metalcore, deathcore? Um I had an affinity for the Christian metal because, you know, I, I grew up as a Christian. Um, I wouldn't say I got serious about being Christian until I was about 19, but um, just kind of growing up in that culture, it's like, oh, this is like edgy music, but it's Christian. So it's like, mm-hmm. it's cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm rebelling, yeah. but I'm also 
staying exactly. in line. Yeah. So yeah. I did listen to like secular metal bands as well. Like, I don't know. It was like Bullet from My Valentine. Oh, yeah. B- Black Dahlia Murder. Uh, Barrier Dead. I love Barrier Dead still. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah. That, it was just, it was cool to have good Christian bands that I could listen to and not feel like I'm hurting my soul. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and during that time too, it felt like the bands that were like running metalcore, like that genre were like all in the Christian scene, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so it it was definitely really cool time. Uh, Yeah. We get some people that a lot of people that we bring on, they say, Hey, you know, it was, it started with like pop punk and then Mm -hmm. you found out something heavier and you got to new metal and then you got heavier. And then it's like, finally they accepted it, but it Mm -hmm. sounds like you just got introduced to it and jumped right in. Yeah. It, it just repetitive listening to stuff. You just, you know, it's like an acquired taste and then yeah. it becomes your favorite thing. <laughs> the only That's right. Thing. The only thing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> cool, man. So uh, moving on to our next question, let's talk a little bit about truly, truly. So mm-hmm. finding out that most of these songs came from a decade, a decade ago. ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what was like, you know, the inspiration for, the EP itself. Um, so are you talking about from back then or currently? Cause that's both. Uh, both. both. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's hard to speak on everything from back then because obviously that's like 12 years ago, 14 years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Time flies. <laughs> I'm old. I don't know how old you guys are, but I'm 31. Um, we're 34, so okay. we got you by a couple years. Cool. All right. So you're not old. You're you're no. a yeah. You're young, athlete. dude. So then you guys know the bands that I'm saying. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> Good. Um, I don't know, man. Back then, it was just the scene was so active where we were at because I I grew up in the Bay Area, so yeah. there's there was uh, venues in every city, like multiple venues. There's always bands playing, like. The high school I went to and just the area surrounding it, there's like probably four or five bands from each school all playing around the same time. And it's just just constant music inspiration and motivation to keep doing stuff and just being right. a Christian in that scene, like it was cool. Like we were encouraged by bands like Four Today, Del Wars Prada at the time, where it's like, Yeah, we can enjoy what we do, make music and glorify the Lord at the same time. And it's, yeah. yeah. And it just went from there you know and so what made you guys decide to come back after so long and put this thing out on all the streaming services yeah so um my guitarist ethan and i like he's been you know one of my best friends since way back then uh more than half my life now and he actually moved to la about 10 years ago um and we just kind of reconnected through like i don't know playing games or something and then we're like hey man let's it's like record all the stuff we never got to record so it all started with portrayals that was our the song that began it all again so i have like the original version like the first rough draft of us recording and it yeah. makes me want to puke <laughs> no. <listening> to- <laughs> it's so bad dude like i hadn't screamed in probably four years I, I basically had to relearn how to do vocals, mm. and thankfully, I I believe I'm a lot better than I ever had been in the past, so it worked out, thankfully, yeah. but yeah. listening to that first version is really funny to me, <laughs> <laughs> I, and I'm not putting that out to the public. <laughs> yeah, I kind of I want to hear that, dude. Like, <laughs> So I have some questions like based on all, everything you've said so far. So sure. these five songs, mm-hmm. four of them are older, and mm-hmm. one is an original? Yeah. And that's is that portrayals or nope? What would you guys guess is the no. line of conquest? Is what I would do. No. no, it's for sure callist. Yep. Which okay, cool, cool. It was callist. I mean, you, we have like a twenty percent chance. I was just it. waiting for you to name <laughs> off the things that we knew it wasn't, and then I was like going to swoop in and be like, "Dude, I I know this them is easy, so well. Gary. Yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> Process of elimination. But yeah, callist was the the purely new song that we wrote, which is kind of more of the tone of the band is going to be moving forward. Cool. Um, like I mentioned through our messages, like I'm going to show you guys a, a song that's going to be on the full length off, off air, but <laughs> cool. it's like, you'll kind of get a taste of what's to come, but yeah, it's less 2010s metalcore overall, 
but we have a very wide variety of genres that we love experimenting with and mm-hmm. i don't know it's nice we'll we'll take you on a journey with the full length <laughs> each song is going to have different flavors well i feel like the ep took us on a journey that was kind of like our like at the end we're like dude we heard so many different uh genres throughout mm-hmm. the whole thing and it was really cool like this one like felt like deathcore and this one was metalcore and this one you know and it was really awesome to have that wide variety so mm-hmm. it's cool that that's going to continue yeah that's definitely one thing that we love about uh this band is just the artistic freedom to do what we want to do <laughs> ultimately it's like I'd, we're not going to limit ourselves to one genre and we call ourselves a metalcore band because metalcore is like the most generic way yeah. to describe yeah. every metal yeah. <laughs> like we we have so many elements of hardcore melodic hardcore gent deathcore slam beatdown whatever like we have it all mm-hmm. it's gonna be in the next in the next uh release so that's uh, awesome it's fun it's fun so does that mean you like re-recorded everything like the all the songs or did you is this do are we listening to original audio from 10 years oh, ago no, no 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 this is all brand new refreshed re-recorded like we never recorded it back then so oh, okay it's, so it's basically all we had were some really cruddy uh Um, cassette tapes (laughs) (laughs) um scratch tracks okay Uh, yeah and um i don't even know where we recorded those they're probably on someone's laptop and you know garage band yeah maybe i don't even know if garage band existed back then (laughs) (laughs) um so that's all we had plus like we recorded a like a live session of our practice and we're just trying to piece together oh what what was that how'd we do that and then I don't know. It's essentially fully new, but just the the uh, basis or the foundation was all written back in 2010 era. That's cool. Yeah. And you decided to add all the arf arfs and the egos Dude, and the. <laughs> that's our like. Okay, so this is so true. Like we absolutely love your vocals, but we we are we. I can't even say like blown away just by every little like addition we got like a, a pick it up arfs. <laughs> <laughs> like ooh, I, I, it's just really good. Like it's just everything we want. We're like, dude, this is legit. That's sick, man. I'm glad you guys like it. Cause we do. Like, we're <laughs> well, so I, into I know it. people are gonna like make fun of it and be like, you know, you always got to do the knocked loose thing. Someone's always got to do this, but it's did, not. The did they make not- that? I don't know. I, I heard it from someone else, but <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's great. Like we we super yeah. loved it. Yeah, yeah. We're like we have to talk about that when he comes on. So. Well, you guys will like the song. I'm going to show you after this. So. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so my favorite song on the EP is "Betrayals." My I like too. went back and forth because Genesis. Like I love Genesis too because awesome brutal gets right into it mm-hmm. and uh it's only you know a minute or whatever so but that that is meant to that. be an intro song so it's, okay it's not like <laughs> all right this is a whole song it's like that's what starts off the set that's what gets yeah. all the energy going and transitions into everything that comes that's what i was telling Ty. dang it so when i go to the gym and just put it on repeat and just like 24 <laughs> times in a row i listen to it, it shouldn't be like that so is that why that song has so many plays and not all the other ones it's just tyler getting it's like <laughs> on repeat 24 so like two reps and it starts over <laughs> dude that i mean if you like it play it, bro <laughs> but yeah we love we i think for me like there were so many awesome pieces of portrayals that I liked mm. and also lyrically uh, mm. just awesome. And so um, obviously your lyrics are extremely uh, Christian, mm. right? Jesus centered. Absolutely. Um, what made you want to write music that glorified God? Um, I think it's a verse in James. If I am misspeaking, then I'll look stupid, but we'll send from, you a message. From, <laughs> from out of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? Yeah. So with our music, I just want to speak about what's important to me. It's like a live journal. And as a Christian, that's what's going to come out. It's either going to be explicitly like worship like where it's all glorifying to God, or it's going to be very hard, uh, different scenarios or situations I've gone through in my life. But ultimately still point toward God's involvement through it all. Mm, Um, So with this full length and with the EP, you see different tones. There's, there's a lot of hope, a lot of peace. There's also darkness and um, 
you know, like song callous. It's all about right. <laughs> yep. Your pretty tough time and uh my walk with the Lord, but ultimately like he's still <laughs> with me. He's still yeah. I'm, I'm still saved. I'm still here, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Just, and it I think that's a really good point. You know, and there's so many like people that talk about like is this a Christian band? Is this a Christian band? You know, all Christians in a band. Is it Christians in a band? And like, yeah. I think that's the the way that it is. Like for you, it sounds like writing. And that's just what you write about because mm-hmm. that's who you are. And like for us, we have a, a podcast. It's not just not necessarily a Christian podcast, but we talk about Christian music way more just because we're Christians and that's yeah. what we do. And we we consume that music, you know. Um, so it's really really cool to, to hear that. Yep. Absolutely, I think that's just the best way to produce the most authentic and genuine music. Like yeah. people are going to relate to it, whether it's through good or bad, you know? Yeah. It's really encouraging to hear you say that, you know, that these days, a lot of bands have like all the ones we grew up with have been like slowly fading away or mm-hmm. watering down their lyrics or just, you know, omitting faith from their lyrics mm-hmm. entirely. And so I feel like we have a huge generation maybe not a generation is not the right word, but there's a bunch of bands coming up right now that, you know, feel the same way that you do. Mm -hmm. And it's really awesome to be. I mean, that's what's fun about doing the podcast is like all these bands reach out to us or random people send us and say, check out this Christian band. And it's like two plays. I'm number three. Awesome. You know? Uh, But yeah, so we'd, we'd love to use our platform to help bands like immortal construct um, to reach a wider audience and get more, more of a platform. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I really appreciate you having me on today. So I think it kind of closes us up a little bit. Um, If you haven't listened to the EP Truly Truly by Mortal Construct, you need to. It is an amazing EP that uh, is like, it goes so hard. Like I think another thing that just absolutely love is that like start to finish, it is brutal. It's super fun. And there is some like cleans, I guess, you know, like interesting, like uh, talking and cleans and stuff. Just little snippets, little 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 taste. (laughs) Taste, yes. But it's so good. And so like every every person I talk to, you know, um, I recently went uh, to Portland with with my wife. We went to watch uh, Nate Bargatze. And on the way, dude, turned up Immortal Construct and was like, listen to this. And she's like, why are you putting this on instead of Taylor Swift? But by the end of it... (laughs) By the end of it, she's like, dude, these these dudes rip. So nice, it was really nice, cool. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe uh we can leave with some things, how we can support uh our listeners can support you guys and maybe what the band's gonna be up to in the near future. Yeah. Um best way to support us is stream our music um on all our social medias, give us a follow, give us a like. Um we have our links up there, we sell merch, we have the whole merch page with some cool stuff in my opinion and yeah share with your friends and yeah i just want people to hear our music man i want people Mm -hmm. to be encouraged i want other people to be inspired to make their own music i want jesus to be glorified that's awesome i told tyler about your uh, hoochie shorts and he needs to get some Dude, I, I don't even have any of those yet. I, I, need to get <laughs> I, I had to Google. I had to Google hoochie shorts. I didn't know what they were. And so uh, now I think I'm going to wear them uh, everywhere I go. That would so be gonna... awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> Send Maybe a pic. That's, that's right. That's right. Um, so did I hear you say full length, future full length? Full length. We already have okay. 10 songs ready. So can you kind of share? Is this including this EP? Nope. Like, is it one all of new. those full lengths? Oh, all new. Okay. 10 so, brand new songs never heard before. So what is the what does 2024 look like for Immortal Construct? I can't promise that the full length is going to come out this year, unfortunately, because um, that costs a lot of money. Oh, yeah. But we definitely have goals to put out music videos and singles at least. Um, we may or may not have a special cover song coming out this year as well. So Ooh. a little ode to some classic metalcore. That's the only hint I'll give, but Let's is it go. going to be the devil Prada's, uh, cover of still fly? A cover, Ooh, a cover. A cover of a cover, dude. <laughs> oh man. I don't that... think I could bring myself to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, that's cool, man. Well, we really appreciate you coming on the podcast. And uh, we, like we said, we're so encouraged with Immortal Construct and just can't wait to see what's going to come from you guys. Awesome, man. I'm glad you guys like it. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Jordan.
So that wraps up our episode, and I'm I'm pretty happy that they were in my top five last year, and yeah. I feel like Tyler feels really bad that they didn't make his I top do. five. If it, I just didn't put an EP in there. I think if it wasn't an EP, I would have. And I should have anyways. Who cares? What's with this EP hate? We're getting so many EPs now in 20, 2024 on from yeah. Would like, you rather yeah? Would you rather get an EP like every year or two? Yeah. So that in in the course of like five years, you've got like three EPs. Mm-hmm. Or would you rather have like two full lengths in the course of five years? EPs. Right. It's, it keeps them relevant, right? Because yeah. it's like their stuff's dropping more frequently. Where like some of our favorite bands, it's like. Oh boy, it's been about three years. I think it's time for a new album. But like, think about it, dude. Like, kids were in freshmen in high school, and they're like graduating, and they're still waiting for the next album. Like, those are some yeah. like formative years to be listening to music and yeah. like to make an impact on people. Right. And so I don't know. I just feel like I feel like doing being able to do it yearly or every two years. Like, you just get better traction, and you kind of stay more relevant in the social scenes. And anyway. So we need to just stop discriminating on EPs and just be like, we shouldn't even call them EPs, just no, call them albums. Yeah, but I like, well, it is an album. Yeah, we'll just call it that. We won't even even say EP anymore. Do you like saying EP? No, it's, it'd be like if we called the other ones LPs. Yeah, exactly. We'll just call them albums. Yeah. Cheers. Well, anyway, let's do that uh, from now on. But that that's the end of the episode. Thanks, everyone, that hung out this long. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you like what we're doing, you can support us by being a patron on Patreon, where you get bonus content you get early access and ad free so i know like we have this automated ad thing that (laughs) sticks ads in in random spots and sometimes i I try to fix them we don't have control of the ads you know we basically let this whoever we publish with do it for us right so uh yeah become a patron and don't deal with that stuff um check out our instagram or facebook join us on discord be part of the community and you can get to know us and complain about us and say how awesome or bad we are at our episodes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, thanks thanks for listening. Thanks guys. See ya. Thank you for listening.